Hi, I'm Warren Staples from the School of Management and today I'm going to talk to you about ethics and governance. Ethics and governance is a subject that is dear to me. It's one that I've uh, taught in for a number of years and, and I'm going to give you a bit of the, uh, the context and background to why we teach this subject and what we're trying to do with the subject. Fundamentally, ethics is about the assessment and practice of moral standards. Okay? And moral standards are about really about what is right and wrong. And ethics is about how do you take these concepts of right and wrong and apply them in the workplace or put them to practice in the workplace. And that's really what uh, business ethics is about, applying moral standards in the context of work and organisations. A lot of people will um, joke that business and ethics is an oxymoron that actually the two concepts don't go together and they will um, they might uh, tease you that studying something like business ethics is a bit silly because business is not about it being ethical it's solely about making money we would argue and I think we'll argue through lots of our um, lots of your courses with us that uh, business and ethics are inextricably linked okay that you can't separate uh, business from ethics Businesses are given their right to exist by governments. They're given their rights to operate, their social licence to operate by communities. They fundamentally operate within societies and are given that right to do so. Therefore, you can't actually remove business from society. Its place is very much uh, within and, and as the uh, dominant institution within society. Partly what we're aiming to do in the course is raise your moral awareness. So we're attempting to raise your moral awareness and have you understand and view lots of the issues that you see in the workplace as having uh, ethical dimensions to them. Um, so that you start to see issues through the lenses of, um, of ethics. And we will introduce um, um, some kind of philosophical theory about how you do that. And um, actually, it's great to go back to some of these um, classic thinkers about what is ethical, what is right, um, and how we should think about making the right decisions. Um, I take a slightly positive view of human behaviour that um, most people within organisations are you know, good people trying to do uh, the best they can under the circumstances they find themselves in. So I take this positive view, and recently, um, Mary Gentilly has come up with her idea that um, what ethics educators should be trying to do is help uh, professionals give voice to their values. What she's saying is that people fundamentally know what's right and wrong. They already are able to assess moral standards. They have their own internal senses of right and wrong. And it's about trying to help them apply that sense in the workplace. How do they enact their values in the workplace to um, achieve, you know, to, to make positive impacts on uh, the organisations in which they work. Now I'm going to talk about corporate governance. Governance is a term that didn't exist 20 or 30 years ago. It's a relatively new term uh, and somewhat a new idea. Governance is important in many types of organisations. It's important in um, government. Government is a form of governance where we have politicians elected to govern uh, public organisations that deliver public services and that's an important part of their role is about the governance of those uh, organisations for uh, their elected people. Governance is also important in business and fundamentally the role of governance in business is that of the board of directors and the most senior executives in the company who sit around uh, the board of directors. Governance is also important in uh, the not-for-profit sector. In Australia recently we had an example of a sporting club, an elite sporting organisation, where they um, were administering performance enhancing supplements to athletes and um, the medical 
professionals within the organisation didn't know what had been administered, the athletes weren't sure what they'd been administered, and the club, you know, wasn't sure exactly what had been administered. So we have fundamental uh, governance problems where there weren't the systems, the internal means and operations and control to know what had happened. So when we talk about business governance in the context of companies, we draw on probably four major ideas. The first idea is we draw on um, are from Sir Adrian Cadbury about the internal operation and control of a company. That really it's about having these internal measures of control. Now we saw in the sporting club example where they really just didn't have those, uh, those oversight processes. It's also fundamentally about the idea of rent protection. That, that people who invest in a company uh, invest their money and have the right to know that the directors are going to look after their investment and take that investment seriously. So it's about protecting uh, their investment in the company. Increasingly, uh, we have ideas of companies being governed for all stakeholders. So not just thinking about um, shareholders who are still clearly important and st still considering shareholders, but thinking about other stakeholders who might be um, employees, they might be uh, union or union representatives, they might be creditors, they might be parent company organisations, they might be representatives of local communities or indigenous communities if we're depending on the location in which we're working. So we have this more stakeholder approach to governance. And then we have uh, Monks and Minnow who have proposed, I think what is the fourth kind of big um, direction in corporate governance, that corporate governance is about setting the entrepreneurial direction and strategy for the firm and measuring performance to it. Previously, I think we'd had this idea where chief executives were almost kings and unchecked. And the role of governance has been, as the board, becoming more important monitoring executives. And increasingly, this role for strategy and setting the direction is at the board level. The board sets the strategic direction the CEO is the chief officer in the company responsible for pursuing that direction. And then uh, his or her ability to deliver on that direction will be monitored by the board and perhaps performance rewarded or punished. If